looking around some older packing boxes recently, I had uncovered a game from my childhood that I had forgotot for so very long. A game that was pretty good for the 8-bit Game Boy Color, SpongeBob Legend of the Lost Spatula. I remember the day me and my family got it. It was back in the summer of 2001. I had traveled with my family for nearly 9 hours to get to Saratoga, New York, to visit my grandparents who were visiting the town while on vacation for various reasons. I remember after a good night's rest, the next day we traveled down to the nearest Walmart and went to the game section. Me and my parents looked over the selection of games and we slimmed it down to two choices. My dad had suggested Spongebob Legend of the Lost Spatula, or my choice, Shrek, Fairy Tale Freakdown. You see, at the time, the first Shrek movie had been released a few months earlier, and I really wanted to get to that game. But my dad informed me that he looked up reviews for the game a while ago and noticed that the game was horrible and that the first game was a bad choice. So we ended up buying the Spongebob game, and for years I played the game and I was amused by it. I enjoyed playing the game for the most part. I mean, it wasn't a classic or anything, but at the time especially, I was really happy to be playing a new game. Now looking back at it, it might not be really as good as I remembered it. But then again, it was the first portable Spongebob game to be produced at the time. And after all, with Spongebob, how can you go wrong? I... I don't... I didn't watch the seasons. Anyway, I know I've been dragging on and on with this game, so it's probably a good idea to get this game started to show you how you can understand the pros and cons of this game. What's funny about this game is that if you try to play on the Super Game Boy, you will receive a message informing you that it won't work. So I guess I'm back to using the Game Boy Player again. The game starts you off with an intro to the game store and a familiar start to how the talking fish were at the beginning of some episodes of the show. Spongebob crashes into a statue, and being unfamiliar with it, decides to ask Mr. Krabs about it. Mr. Krabs informs Spongebob that it's an entrance to the Flying Dutchman's Underworld. He explains that long ago, a master fire cook had used a golden spatula that made him a professional at patty flipping, and that it's been locked up for a long time. The only one to enter the grill statue to the Dutchman's underworld is to find an out for said grill to open up. But first, SpongeBob needs to find a treasure chest in Goo Lagoon that contains a map that will help him locate the knobs. As the game starts, you'll notice that the graphics are actually too bad for a Game Boy Color game. They're appealing to look at, and the characters in the game look pretty close to their cartoon counterparts. Considering that it's 8-bit, I'm not really complaining. Also, the soundtrack is pretty catchy too. My favorite tune happens to be from the Undersea Desert stage, but I should digress to the gameplay. For the most part, it's pretty straightforward, excluding the fact that A is the attack button and B is the jump button, which can be confusing at times. To talk to people, you have to push up on your control to get them to give you hints, although sometimes they'll say things that have nothing to do with helping you out. Like some will talk about where you should go, and others will only tell you about the catchphrase. The bright side about this is that once you find the map and are able to go to the other locations of Bikini Bomb, said characters will give you tasks that will help you get upgrades on your weapons. Oh yeah, speaking of weapons, there's a good variety. You got the bubble wand that will drive away enemies, mainly bubble bass. A jellyfish net to catch your jellyfish and clams so you can clear the way and not get hit. A net launcher so you can capture big baddies. A spatula so you can temporarily stun your enemies by feeding them Krabby Patties. A special pair of glasses that can help you see through treasure chests ahead of time so you can see where you're getting. And finally, a pair of spring shoes that can help you jump twice as high as usual to certain locations, like to get more power-ups and pants. You can collect pairs of pants from other treasure chests. If you get hit once, you'll go down to your underwear. If you get hit again, you lose your underpants and look embarrassed to the camera. Thankfully, this isn't one of those games that only gives you two lives and then sends you back to the beginning of the level. You just start back at the nearest checkpoint. The bright side is if you pester Mrs. Puff long enough up at the point that she expands, she'll give you a hall monitor you for that will give you an extra hit. Back to the game, if you manage to find said items that your friends lost or need to be delivered, you'll get an upgrade on your weapons in a cutscene. Some look better and have much different details than others. For example, this picture of Patrick has pretty good detail, while this one was saying looks a bit bizarre. Her face alone feels a bit out of place. In this picture, a square of being stinged by a jellyfish seems out of place too. SpongeBob himself seems to be betrayed lazily. I recognize that this is a Game Boy Color game, but I think they should have worked on the picture again to make him look better. 
The one thing in this game that annoys me constantly is that I die in it because I don't know what's ahead of me half the time, especially when I'm using the spring shoes. Sometimes you need to shrink your body so you can get to different locations, which can result in a hit if you're not able to get to a safe spot to get rid of the clamps in time. Also at times, you may need to use these weird mushroom springs to make it to higher levels. Nice sprite by the way. Each boss has some weaknesses. The jellyfish's weakness is bubbles. The fish cowboy robber's weakness is feeding him a ton of Krabby Patties. You know, when you're not being shot by ketchup. No joke. And this weird fish's weakness is more bubbles and then finally using the neck catcher on him. After all four knobs are found, you place it onto the statue and end up falling inside of said statue and end up in rock bottom. And since this is one of the longest levels in the game, you can easily get lost. There are numerous paths to take you to the end of the stage, but every one of them seem to delay your chances because you never have a chance to stop your enemies from attacking you before you lose your health and have to start the nearest checkpoint, which can become extremely aggravating to someone who doesn't have the patience for this shit. Once you finally find the end of the stage, you then jump into the hole and it takes you to hell. Well, it looks like hell at least, but according to the game, it's the Dutchman Slayer. As we reach the final stages of the game, it's a hellish area as the Dutchman's henchmen get in SpongeBob's way. As you try to find your way to the final boss, you have to make sure you don't miss your mark on the moving platforms, or otherwise, you're going to be falling all the way back down to the bottom. And it takes over two minutes or so just to make it all the way to the top, so if that happens, you better have the patience to keep trying so that you can make it back to the top of the mountain. As you finally encounter Flying Dutchman, he challenges you to make him several parries in order to be able to obtain the golden spatula into win the game. It turns out to be pretty simple, as all you have to do is throw 5 parries at him and he's done for. The game then ends with Spongebob obtaining said golden spatula, making him the best fry cook in Bikini Bottom, and making Mr. Krabs witcher than ever. Uh, as I realize that this game has its flaws, it seems pretty short, and can be difficult at times. I actually do enjoy it for nostalgia's sake. Remember when I was younger and playing it back in 2001 for the first time? It made me really smile. Even it was a bit of a mess trying to figure out the controls and whatnot. In the end, I have to say that although this game is not classic, that it's at least worth a try, especially by a hardcore SpongeBob fan. Besides, there are pretty much other games that deserve more than being in this. Oh, well, there's only one way to ignore it for now. <laughs>